In this video, we're going to cover the installation options available to those who want to install Emacs on Linux. The information covered in this video is not specific to any particular Linux distribution, so if you're using Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, Debian, or any other flavor of Linux, you will find it relevant. Depending on your Linux distribution, there can be numerous packages available to download as an option when you want to install Emacs. I'm going to show these options to you using the Ubuntu Packages web interface, but even if you're not using Ubuntu, this information is important for you to know. I'm only showing you this using the Ubuntu web interface because it is the easiest and most convenient way to explain things. If you head on over to packages.ubuntu.com and choose to search for the Emacs package on the latest version of Ubuntu, which is currently Artful, you can see that it returns one result. Let's click on it. You can see that this is a meta package. You don't need to worry what a meta package is, that's not important. The important thing to note here is that an installation of Emacs is satisfied if you install Emacs 25 or Emacs Lucid or Emacs No X. These three types of Emacs package will appear across Linux distributions. Why are there three different Emacs packages instead of one? What exactly is the difference between them? Well, the first package, Emacs 25, is the default Emacs package which gets installed. Previous Ubuntu releases may have this labelled as Emacs 24, and other Linux distributions may label their equivalent package as just Emacs, rather than having the major number on the end. This should be the Emacs package you choose to install by default, unless you have a good enough reason to choose another one. This package allows you to open Emacs using the default GTK graphical user interface. One of the other Emacs packages has dash no X on the end of it. You should choose to install this version if the machine you are installing Emacs on is a server or does not have graphical support. X is the standard for graphical interfaces on Unix and Unix-like machines, so the dash no X refers to how the package does not come with support for it. If you install this version, Emacs will work in the terminal. It will not be able to open up in a graphical display. The final Emacs package has dash lucid suffix to it. To understand this package, we need to cover a bit of Emacs history. In the early 1990s, there was a single main version of Emacs called GNU Emacs, which was controlled by the Free Software Foundation. A company called Lucid Inc. wanted to create an integrated development environment for C and C++ based on GNU Emacs, but due to issues and deadlines, they ended up not being able to add their source code contributions to the main GNU Emacs, and so instead packaged their contributions into a new version, which they called Lucid Emacs. Lucid Emacs development occurred separately from GNU Emacs, but they both took ideas from each other and incorporated them into their projects. Eventually, Lucid Inc. went out of business, but since the code was open source, others continued developing it. The project was also renamed from Lucid Emacs to X Emacs to avoid potential issues with trademarks over the name Lucid. X Emacs development continues, but nowadays it is much, much slower than GNU Emacs, which has largely caught up with the features that X Emacs brought. You can check out the link in the description for more information about the schism between Lucid Emacs and Free Software Foundation's GNU Emacs. The important thing to note about the Dash Lucid package is that it is not Lucid Emacs or X Emacs. It's still GNU Emacs. The difference between the Dash Lucid package and the others relates to how it is graphically displayed. The Dash Lucid Emacs version tries to mimic the look and feel of Lucid Emacs, but it's still GNU Emacs under the hood. People may argue that the Lucid version is better than the GTK version, but in reality, the choice of whether to use the Lucid package or not comes down to preference. If you prefer how it looks, then go ahead and use it. Let's take a look at how the different packages look once they are installed. Here you can see the default Emacs package, which uses GTK on the left. The image on the right shows how Emacs looks when you install it using the Dash Lucid package. The only difference between them is how they look. The functionality is exactly the same. Although I think the Lucid Emacs does look better than the default Emacs out of the box, I still use the default. This is because I customised my Emacs install to look exactly how I want anyway, including the background colour, font colours, and also getting rid of the toolbar at the top. Since the functionality is the same, and you're most likely going to customise the look and feel of Emacs anyway, I would just choose to go with the default. If you really want to go with the Lucid Emacs install, that's fine too. In this image you can see how Emacs looks if it is installed using the dash no x package. In this case it runs in the terminal, as there is no graphical support. The only time I would choose to install this version of Emacs 
is when I want to install it on a server or a machine which does not have graphical support. Otherwise, I would just stick to the default like normal. That's it, you now understand the choices available to you when you're trying to install Emacs on a Linux distribution. Almost always, you will just want to go with the default Emacs package, but the NoX package is also useful if you're installing Emacs on a server. Now that you know about the Emacs packages available on Linux, check out my other video showing how to actually install it on Ubuntu, Fedora and CentOS. Also, if you want to see more helpful tips and tricks on Emacs, be sure to subscribe.